It's Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to the following special announcement. In the beginning was the word. Me. Then came sentences. Me is. The invention of fire brought us prime time storytelling. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And voice fiction was born. A few hundred thousand years later, voice fiction podcasts blossomed from the fertile mind of Captain John Tadrazak of Misfits Audio. Everything you wanted to know about audio drama from people who actually do know. Hi, I'm Uncle Roy Yokelson. I'm Glenn Haskell. Hi, I'm Bruce Press. Acting, auditioning, copyright laws, writing, audiobooks. I'm Russell Gold. I'm Jim Smagata. Hi, I'm Julie Hoverson. Hi, I'm Karen Kaler. Production, music, all this. And the most sanguine explanation for the undying popularity of post-apocalyptic zombie cannibals you're ever likely to hear. Voice Fiction Podcast, starting January 1st at voicefiction.com. And now, with great pleasure, we present Glenn Haskell's Miracle on 34th Street. Welcome to the Misfits Audio presentation of Miracle on 34th Street. Recorded in a variety of studios throughout the world and lovingly assembled in the semi-plush confines of Studio A. We begin our journey on Thanksgiving Day as thousands of residents are preparing for the annual Thanksgiving Parade. As in life, the events that unfold are unexpected and are dependent on real-life interaction. Now, Miracle on 34th Street. Hey, sorry to interrupt your work, but you're making a serious mistake. Excuse me? With the reindeer, I mean. You're putting Prancer where Dasher should be. And Blitzen should always be on my right-hand side. He should, huh? Yes, and another thing. Donner's antlers have four points instead of three. But I don't suppose anyone would notice that except me. No, I don't suppose so. Say, who are you? My name is Kringle, Chris Kringle. Well, uh, glad I could be of help. Bye. You see, it's all in your wrist. I'm like throwing a ball. Now watch. See? Mrs. Walker, that new Santa Claus you hired is wonderful. Where did you find him? He answered the ad along with a hundred others, Mr. Shellhammer. He's good, isn't he? Yes. Well, the parade's ready to start. Uh, Are you coming? I'm going home to get in a hot tub. I may just stay there until next Thanksgiving. But you've worked so hard on the parade. Look at that big baseball player. He was a clown last year. They just painted him different. My mother told me he manages the parade. Wow, he's really a giant, isn't he? Really, Mr. Gailey, and you're a lawyer. There's no such thing as giants. Well, maybe not today, but in olden times, like the giant Jack killed in the fairy tale. I don't know any fairy tales. You mean your mother and father never read you any? My mother thinks they're silly, and I never met my father. You see, my mother and father were divorced when I was a baby. Come in. Hello, Mr. Gailey. My housekeeper told me Susan was here. I'm her mother. Yes, Susan has told me quite a bit about you. Well, she's told me quite a bit about you, too. The man in the front apartment. Hi, dear. The parade's much better than last year. Good. Let's hope Mr. Macy agrees with you. Uh, Would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, don't bother. No bother. It's ready. I want to thank you for being so kind to Susan. All part of the plot. The best way to meet the mother is to be nice to the child. Uh, What a horrible trick. Susan tells me you don't approve of fairy tales. I don't. I think we should be realistic and completely truthful with our children. And not let them grow up believing in a lot of myths and legends. 
like Santa Claus, for example. I see. Parade's over, Mother. The acrobats were good. At those prices, they should be. Mother, I was thinking. We have such a big turkey for dinner, and there are only two of us. Couldn't we invite Mr. Gailey? Couldn't we?、Uh, dear, I. Oh, please don't bother. I'll just、uh, get a sandwich or something. It's an awful big turkey. Oh, it's not that, dear. But I'm sure Mr. Gailey has other plans. No, he hasn't. Have you? Well, as a matter of fact, to be truthful and completely realistic with the child, I must say I haven't. Please, mother, please. Didn't I ask her all right, Mr. Gailey?、Uh, well, that all depends. Dinner's at three o'clock. Susan, you asked just right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, before the children arrive, I want to give you a few pointers on being a good Santa Claus.、Oh, by all means. Now, here's a list of toys we have to push. You know, things we've overstocked. You'll find that a great many children are undecided as to what they want for Christmas. When this occurs, you immediately suggest one of these items. You understand? Eh,、uh, I certainly do. All right,、uh, here they come. You get up there and go to work. Memorize that list. Remember, be jolly. You're working for Macy's. Imagine that, making a child take something they don't want just because he bought too many of the wrong toys, and that's what I've been fighting against for so many years: the commercialization of Christmas. Merry Christmas! Now,、uh, what's your name? Peter. And what do you want for Christmas, Peter? I wanna, I want a fire engine just like the big ones, only smaller. It's got real hoses and squirts real water. I won't play in the house, only in the backyard. I promise. Um, <laughs> well, Peter, I see you're a very good boy, so you'll get your fire engine. You see, I told you he'd get me one. Um, yes, dear. Well, you wait right over there. Mommy wants to thank Santa too. What do you think you mean by saying a thing like that? I've been all over town trying to find that kind of fire engine. Macy's doesn't have one. Nobody's got one. Oh, but you can get those fire engines at the Acme Toy Company on West Forty Sixth Street. Only four fifty. Wonderful bargain. Macy's sending people to other stores. Well, the important thing is to keep the children happy. Whether Macy's or somebody else sells the toy, it doesn't matter, does it? Don't you feel that way? Me? Sure. But I didn't think Macy's did. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Oh yes, we have skates, nice shiny skates, and they're very good, very good indeed. I don't think they're the kind of skates you want. No, they have really wonderful skates at Gimbel's. Gimbel's? The sales lady said I was to speak to you. Uh, the head of the toy department. Yes, ma'am. Well, look, I want to congratulate you on Macy's and this new thing you're doing, sending people to other stores. To think that a big commercial store like this puts the spirit of Christmas before the commercial. I haven't done much shopping here before, but from now on, I'm a regular Macy's customer. This is awful silly, Mr. Gailey. Well, maybe you'll feel differently after you've talked to Santa Claus. What's your name? Mine,、uh, Chris Kringle. I am Santa Claus. You don't believe that, do you? You see, my mother is Mrs. Walker, the lady that hired you. But I must say, you're the best-looking Santa I ever seen. Thank you. Your whiskers don't have the things that go over your ears. Well, that's because they're real, just like I'm really Santa Claus. Go on, pull them. Go ahead. 
Wow. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> And now, what do you want me to bring you for Christmas? Nothing, thank you. Whatever I want, my mother will get me. If it's sensible and doesn't cost too much. Susan, dear, I think you've taken up enough of this gentleman's time. Uh, your maid had to go home. Her mother sprained her ankle. She asked me to bring Susan down here for you. Yes, she phoned. I thought as long as we were down here, we might as well talk to Santa Claus. He's a nice old man, Mother. His whiskers are real, too. Yes, dear. A lot of old men have real whiskers like that. Susan, if you'd like to go over and look at the dolls, I'll be with you in just a minute. I want to talk to Mr. Gailey. All right. I didn't think there was any harm in saying hello to the old gent. I think there is harm. I tell her Santa Claus is a myth, and you bring her down here to meet a very convincing old man with real whiskers. What's wrong with that? It's like filling her head full of fairy tales. She'll grow up to believe life is a fantasy instead of reality. She'll keep waiting for Prince Charming to come along, and when he doesn't, it'll be a... We are talking about Susan, right? <sighs> Whether you agree with me or not, I'll have to ask you to respect my wishes. Sent for me? Yes, thank you. Uh, sit down, won't you? You really have a lovely little girl, Mrs. Walker. Thank you. Uh, Susan is the reason I asked you to drop down. She's a little confused. She thinks you're Santa Claus. Would you tell her you're not Santa Claus? That there is actually no such person? I'm sorry to disagree with you, Mrs. Walker. But not only is there such a person, but <laughs> here I am to prove it. Oh, no, you don't understand. I want you to tell her the truth. Um, what is your name? Chris Kringle. I bet you're in the first grade. Second. No, I mean your real name. That is my real name. Second grade. <laughs> Gracious. It's a progressive school. Oh, a progressive school. Where did you get such a lovely outfit? Macy's. We get 10% off. Um, Susan, would you go in and talk to Miss Adams for a minute? All right. Goodbye, young lady. Hope I see you again soon. I hope so, too. Bye. <sighs> Chris Kringle. Address, Brooks Memorial Home for the Aged. If you care to call them and ask for Dr. Pierce, he'll be happy to confirm it. Age is as old as my tongue and a little bit older than my teeth. Really? Well, that's the truth. Next of kin, Donner, Blitzen... Prancer. And dancer. I'm sorry, Mr. Kringle. Yes, well, I'm afraid we're going to have to make a change. You see, the Santa Claus we had last year is back in town, and, well, I feel I owe it to him to... Have I done something wrong? No, no. Excuse me. Uh, yes? Mr. Macy wants to see you immediately, Mrs. Walker. Oh, yes, right away. Oh, you'll have to excuse me. Miss Adams will give you your voucher on the way out, and you'll receive a full week's salary. <clears throat> now, now about that new sales policy that you two seem to have initiated. Oh, Mr. Macy, I, uh, I, uh... Macy, Santa Claus, is sending customers to Gimbel's? Preposterous! What? Yet we cannot quarrel with success. Telephone calls, telegrams, over 500 parents expressing their undying gratitude to Macy's. So, as a result, I have decided to make this the new sales policy for the entire store. If we haven't got what a customer wants, we'll send him where he can get it. In this way, Macy's will be known as, as the store with a heart. The store that puts public service ahead of profits. Well, I just wanted to express our appreciation and tell you that in your Christmas envelopes, there will be a more practical expression of our gratitude. Thank you, Mr. Macy. Yes, thank you. That will be all. Oh, oh, and, and tell that wonderful Santa Claus of yours, I haven't forgotten him either. No, no, never mind. I'll tell him myself in the morning. Imagine that. A bonus. I fired him. Who? Santa Claus. What? What? 
He's crazy. He thinks he is Santa Claus. I don't care if he thinks he's the Easter Bunny. You better get him back. It's too great a risk. He might have a fit or something. I'm telling you, the man's insane. Maybe just a little bit insane. Mr. Sawyer. What? We'll get Sawyer to examine him. He's a psychologist. That's what he's being paid to do. Examine the employees. I can't get him back. He's already gone. Then you better scoot out and get him. Because if you don't, we're going to have a very unmerry Christmas. Oh, Mr. Kringle! Mr. Kringle, I'm afraid I acted rather hastily or, or perhaps unfairly. We want you to stay on. Well, this is quite good news. You see, Mrs. Walker, for 50 years or so, I have been increasingly worried about Christmas. Christmas is not just a day. It is a frame of mind. And that's what they've been changing. Well, I'm glad you're taking me back. Maybe I can do something about it. I'm glad I met you and your daughter. You'll be my test case. What? Yes. And in a way, you're the whole thing in miniature. And if I win you over, well, there's still hope. And if not, I guess I'm through. But I'll try, and I'm warning you, I don't give up easily. Oh, well, Mr. Kringle, first thing in the morning, could you report to Mr. Sawyer's office for a little examination? Mental examination? Well, uh, partly, yes. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. <laughs> I've taken dozens. Haven't failed one yet. <sighs> How many days in the week? Seven. Uh, how many fingers do you see? Four. Who was vice president under James Monroe? Daniel D. Tompkins. <laughs> I'll bet your Mr. Sawyer doesn't know that one. How much is three times five? You asked me that before. I'm conducting this examination. How much is three times five? Same as last time. Fifteen. You're rather nervous, aren't you, Mr. Sawyer? Do you get enough sleep? My personal habits are no concern to you. Oh, I, I'm sorry. It's just that I hate to see anyone all tied up. How many fingers do you see? Three. Uh, looks like you bite your nails, too. You know, very often, nervous habits like yours are caused by insecurity. Are you uh, happy at home, Mr. Sawyer? That will be all, Mr. Kringle. The examination is over. You may go. And it may interest you to know I have been happily married for 26 years. Oh, I'm delighted to hear it. Bye. It's your wife, Mr. Sawyer. What is it? Agnes! How many times have I told you not to bother me? How long have you known Chris, Dr. Pierce? Well, he wandered into the home about eight months ago, looked the place over and said, it'll do. Just stayed on. Has he ever told you his real name? He said his name was Chris Kringle. We never pressed further. Mrs. Walker, after giving that man a comprehensive examination, it is my considered opinion he should be dismissed immediately. Dr. Pierce, this is Mr. Sawyer. How do you do? Excuse me. Didn't Chris answer the questions correctly? Well, yes, he did, but there was a complete lack of concentration. There's no doubt about it. He should be placed in a mental institution. Wait a minute. People are institutionalized to prevent them from hurting themselves or other people. His is a delusion for good. He only wants to be friendly, helpful. Mrs. Walker, naturally I cannot discharge this man. So when he begins to exhibit his latent maniacal tendencies, which I assure you he will, the responsibility will be entirely yours. Dr. Pierce, if there's the slightest possibility of trouble, I... What trouble could Chris possibly get into? Well, coming to work, for instance. A policeman might ask him his name. Now, you know that would get him into a fight. Well, it could be avoided easily enough. Find someone here in the store to rent him a room, and they could go to and from work together. 
Oh, yes, that would solve everything. That's a wonderful idea. Yes, isn't it? Your son's away at school. What about his room? Well, uh, I'll talk to Mrs. Shellhammer as soon as I get home. In the meantime, you take Chris home to dinner. Oh, no, I couldn't. Really, Mrs. Walker. If I can supply the room, the least you can do is furnish a free meal. What sort of games do you play, Susan? I don't play much with the children. They play silly games. They do? Like today. They were playing zoo. And all the children were animals. Homer was supposed to be the zookeeper. He said, what kind of animal are you? I said, I'm not an animal. I'm a girl. He said, only animals allowed here. Bye. Oh, that's too bad. It sounds like a wonderful game to me. Of course, to play it right, you've got to have imagination. Do you know what imagination is? That's when you see something and it's really not there. Well, yes, but I believe imagination is a place all by itself. You know, like the British nation or the French nation. Well, this is the imagination. <laughs> uh, say, how would you like to make snowballs in the summertime? <gasps> or drive a bus down Fifth Avenue, hmm? Oh! Or be the Statue of Liberty in the morning. And in the afternoon, a flock of geese flying south. Well, in the first place, you'd have to learn to pretend. That's imagination. Now, the next time they play zoo, you tell Homer you're a monkey. But I don't know how to be a monkey. I'll show you. Let's stand up. First, you bend way over. (laughs) That's it. Keep your arms loose. Then you scratch. (laughs) (laughs) On the contrary, the firm of Hayslip, Sherman & Hayslip has been very good to me. But being an exceptional lawyer, I want to open my own office. Naturally. We are having our own lesson in pretending. And we're doing pretty well, too. (laughs) (laughs) She'll have nightmares for you. But she'll be having a lot of fun in the daytime. (laughs) Hello. Oh, Mr. Shellhammer. That's fine. The Shellhammers have a room for you. Well, that's very kind of them. But I've accepted Mr. Gailey's offer to stay with him. Uh, Mr. Gailey? I'll get the meat. Thank you, Mr. Shellhammer. But it seems he's made other arrangements. Uh, Yes. Well, goodbye. Well, here we are. Venison, a friend of mine at the office, gave it to me. What's venison? Deer meat. If you don't like it, I have eggs for you. Could I have eggs, too? Venison. You know, I, I couldn't. Oh, I forgot. There must be something you want for Christmas, something even your mother doesn't know about. Why don't you give me a chance? All right. Good. That's what I want for Christmas. A dollhouse like this? No, a real house. A real house? If you're really Santa Claus, you can get it for me. If you can't, you're just a nice man with a white beard, like Mother says. Well, just because every child doesn't get his wish, that does not mean there isn't a Santa Claus. That's what I thought you say. But what could you possibly want with a house like this? To live in it with my mother. But you have this lovely apartment. But I built a backyard and a swing and... Guess you can't get it, huh? No, I, I didn't say that. Well, that's a tall order, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, May I keep this? Uh Uh-huh. Good night, Susan. Good night. Do you like living in the city? It's all right. I'd kind of like to get out in the country sometime, though. 
Not a big place, just one of those junior partner deals on Long Island. I know the kind you mean. One of those colonial houses. That or Cape Cod. I've been thinking about Mrs. Walker. Like a lot of divorced women, she's determined no one will ever hurt her again. With a little effort on your part, she might be made to crawl out of her shell. You know, those two are a couple of lost souls. It's up to us to help them. I'll take care of Susie, if you'll take care of her mother. Chris, I've always wondered, do you sleep with your beard inside or outside the covers? Outside? <laughs> Ain't the cool air helps the whiskers grow. There they sat, adult but still children at heart. It was summer, warm, glorious summer. The end. Did you like that story, Susan? Mr. Crinkle, do you think I'll get my house for Christmas? I can't promise, but we mustn't give up hope. Good night, Susan. Tomorrow evening I'll read you another story. I can't. I have to go to school. Isn't this vacation? Yes, but this is what they call a required... Function. A required function. Hmm. Uh, the, <clears throat> the Fillmore Progressive School requires your presence at a special performance of a Christmas play to be given in the modern manner. Uh, what does that mean? A Christmas play without Santa Claus. Well, a Christmas play without Santa Claus? Uh, uh, <clears throat> the performance will be closed by a short address. Subject... Uh, Exploding the myth of Santa Claus. Hmm. Uh, the guest speaker will be Mr. Albert Sawyer. I'm very happy you enjoyed our little play. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our old friend, Mr. Albert Sawyer. Parents and young people, it's thrilling to see so many happy, smiling faces. I know you are all looking forward to a joyous Christmas, but as those of you in this intelligent group know, this is going to be a Christmas without Santa Claus. Such a person as Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, or Kris Kringle does not exist, never has existed, and never will exist. This silly old man in his red suit represents the wishful dreaming of all people. He's been called the all-giver, the generous father. But mature adults who keep this myth alive are clinging to childish fantasies. They show themselves afraid to face realities. People who play Santa have a strong feeling of guilt. <laughs> Mrs. Sawyer. Quiet, darling. I see nothing to laugh at. <clears throat> Far from being amusing... <laughs> he doesn't look happy, Mother. No, Susan. He does not. Far from being amusing, this myth is actually harmful. Only ridiculous men in white whiskers keep this myth alive. Now you've gone too far, Mr. Sawyer. Oh, Chris. He became violent because I attacked his delusion. And I'll wager he'll do it again. Well, if you ask me, we ought to get an outside psychiatrist to examine him. Then you better do it right away before Mr. Macy hears about it. That's right. You explain it to Mr. Kringle. After all, you're his friend. Oh, no, I, I can't. Well, I, I've i grown very fond of him. This is going to hurt him deeply. I, well, I just can't. 
All right. What can we do? I think I have it. You tell Mr. Kringle that Mrs. Walker wants him to leave at once in order to have some publicity pictures taken with the mayor. I'll have a car waiting outside. As soon as we get him in the car, we'll drive him straight off to Bellevue Hospital. Yes, that would do it. I'll ride up front with the driver. Hello, Chris. Uh, Hello, Fred. You flunked that psychiatrist examination deliberately, didn't you? Why? I had great hopes, Fred. I had a feeling that Mrs. Walker was beginning to believe in me. Now I know she was only humoring me. Mrs. Walker didn't know anything about taking pictures with the mayor. That was Mr. Sawyer's idea. Sawyer, contemptible, deceitful, dishonest, but he's out there and I'm here. If that's normal, I don't want it. But you can't just think of yourself. What happens to you matters to a lot of people. People like me who believe in you and what you stand for. People like, well, like Susie, who is just beginning to. Chris, you can't just let them down. You're right. Let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute. You flunked that examination, but good. Yes. I said our first president was Calvin Coolidge. (laughs) Oh, but you can fix that. You'll think of something. Now, take it easy. A judge is going to be asked to sign papers committing you to a mental institution. The only chance would be to prove you legally sane in a public hearing. Good. I can think of nothing better. Don't you see? That will settle the question once and for all. Do you solemnly swear that the evidence you're about to give at this hearing is the truth? The whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, good morning. You may proceed, Mr. District Attorney. My name's Thomas Mara. What's yours? Chris Pringle. Oh, where do you live? Oh, I believe that's what this hearing will decide. That's a very sound answer, Mr. Kringle. Thank you, Your Honor. Tell me, do you really believe you're Santa Claus? Of course. The state rests, Your Honor. In view of this statement, do you still wish to put in a defense, young man? I do, Your Honor. I'm fully aware of my client's opinions. In fact, that is the entire case against him, that Mr. Kringle is not saying because he believes himself to be Santa Claus. An entirely logical assumption, I'm afraid. Not necessarily, Your Honor. You believe yourself to be Judge Harper, yet no one questions your sanity because you are Judge Harper. Mr. Kringle is a subject of this hearing, not to me. Exactly. So I intend to prove that Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus. What does Mr. Hayslip of Hayslip, Sherman, and Hayslip say about the trial? That I was jeopardizing the dignity of the firm, that I either drop the case or they drop me. So, leaving me no choice, I quit. Oh, Fred, you didn't. 
Well, I can't let Chris down. He needs me, and all the rest of us need him. Darling, he's a kind, wonderful old man, but you can't throw your entire career away over sentiment. I'm not throwing my career away. I'll get by on a fine lawyer. This doesn't shake your faith in me, does it? This is a question of common sense, not faith. Faith is believing in things when common sense tells you not to. I wish you could let yourself believe in people like Chris, and in fun and love and joy and all the other intangibles. Can't pay the rent with intangibles. And you can't live without them. Why don't you try a little blind faith, darling? I think I have the right to ask you to be a little more practical and realistic. Yes, I suppose you have. It's all cockeyed. Here we are, as close as two people can be, yet there's a loneliness about it. Well, I tried my best. I know you have, darling, and so have I, but we're going to need a lot more than each other's arms. Somehow, I just don't think we've got it. Funny, with all my common sense, I I was just beginning to think that this time it might work out. So was I, but... Can I help you trim the tree? Thanks. I can do it. Well, good night, Mrs. Walker. Night, Mr. Gailey. Your name, sir? R. H. Macy. Do you recognize this man? Yes, he's an employee of mine. He's Chris Kringle. Do you believe him to be of sound mind? I do. Mr. Macy, you're under oath. Do you really believe this man is Santa Claus? Do you? <clears throat> I, 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 I do. That is all. <laughs> Mr. Sawyer, you are fired. Your Honor, there is no such person as Santa Claus, and everybody knows it. I ask that the court make an immediate ruling. Is there or is there not a Santa Claus? I, um, well, this court will take a short recess to consider the matter. Look, Judge Harper, I don't care about the law. I'm talking about politics. You go back in there and rule that there's no Santa Claus, and we won't be able to put you in the primaries. Look, Charlie, I'm a responsible judge. How can I seriously rule that there's a Santa Claus? All right. Go back in there and rule that there isn't. The kids read about it, and so they don't hang up their stockings. So what happens to all the toys that are supposed to be in them stockings? Nobody buys them. Oh, the toy manufacturers are really going to love that. And what about the Christmas card makers, candy companies? Oh, boy. Are you going to be a popular guy with them? What about the Salvation Army? They got a Santa Claus on every corner. Henry, I'm telling you, if you go in there and rule that there's no Santa Claus, well, you can count on getting just two votes, your own and the district attorneys out there. <sighs> <clears throat> this court has just consulted the highest authority available. The um, traditions of American justice demands um, a broad and uh, unprejudiced view of such controversial matter, and therefore this court is determined to keep an open mind and hear evidence from either side. But can my opponent produce any evidence in support of his contention? Your Honor, I can. Will Thomas Mara take the stand? Who, me? Thomas Mara, Jr. Hi, Daddy. Tommy, uh, do you know the difference between telling the truth and telling a lie? Everybody knows you shouldn't tell a lie, especially in court. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Sure. And what does he look like? 
There he is, sitting over there. I object, Your Honor. Overruled. Tommy, why are you so sure there's a Santa Claus? Because Daddy told me so. Did he, Daddy? <laughs> you believe your Daddy, don't you? Sure, I do. Daddy wouldn't tell me anything that wasn't so. Would you, Daddy? Thank you, Tommy. Bye, Daddy. The state of New York is willing to concede the existence of Santa Claus. But I ask that Mr. Gailey produce authoritative evidence that Mr. Kringle is the one and only Santa Claus. Your point is well taken, Mr. Morrow. Mr. Gailey, are you ready to show that Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus on the basis of competent authority? Not at this time, Your Honor. I ask for an adjournment until this time tomorrow. This court stands adjourned until 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Your bath's ready. What are you doing, Susan? Fighting to Mr. Crinkle to let him know I believe in everything he told me and everything will turn out fine. That's nice, dear. He'll like that. Where shall I send it? Why don't you send it to the county courthouse? Okay. What did you write, Mother? I believe in you, too. Go take your bath now. Could you give me the number of the main post office, please? Hello, dead letter office. Are you kidding? We got maybe a couple hundred thousand. Yes, ma'am, we sure would. Hey, lady, that's not a bad idea. Thank you. I've got bad news for you. I've tried every way to get some competent authority. I wired the mayor, the governor, everybody. This letter is from Susan. It means more to me than all the mayors and governors in the world. It's all over. He hasn't got a thing. Fred, can I see you for a moment? The defendant has yet to produce one bit of authoritative proof that this man is really Santa Claus. And in view of the fact that it is Christmas Eve and we're all anxious to get to our homes, I ask that these commitment papers be signed without further delay. Uh, uh, Mr. Daly, have you anything further to offer? I should like to submit the following evidence, Your Honor. It concerns an official agency of the United States government, the post office, one of the world's largest business concerns. Your Honor, I'm sure we're all deeply grateful for the work of the post office, but it hardly has any bearing on this case. Furthermore, the postal laws make it a criminal offense to willfully misdirect mail or intentionally deliver it to the wrong party. Your Honor, I'm sure the state of New York is willing to admit that the post office is authoritative, prosperous, and efficient. For the record? For the record, anything to get on with this case. Then, Your Honor, I offer these letters into evidence. They are simply addressed to Santa Claus, yet they were each delivered to Mr. Kringle by employees of the post office department. I offer these as authoritative proof... Your Honor, three letters are hardly authoritative proof. I have further exhibits, but I hesitate to produce them. Oh, I'm sure we'll all be glad to see them. Here, put them on my desk. On your desk? Yes. Very well, Your Honor. Bring them in. Your Honor, every 
one of these letters is addressed to Santa Claus, and the post office has delivered them to my client. Therefore, the United States government recognizes this man, Chris Kringle, as Santa Claus. If the United States of America believes this man is Santa Claus, then this court <laughs> will not dispute it. He's dismissed. Thanks, Your Honor. And a Merry Christmas to you. And a Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Green. Oh, Mrs. Walker, I got your note. It made me very happy. Oh, I'm glad. Won't you come for dinner tonight? Tonight? <laughs> oh, I'm working tonight. You see, it's Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. What's the matter with Susan? I think she misses Chris. Don't worry, young lady. Chris is bound to come. I didn't get my present, Uncle Fred. Why, dear, you've got a lot of presents. Not the one Mr. Crinkle was going to get for me. What was that? It doesn't matter. I, I didn't get it. I, I knew it wouldn't be here. But I thought I'd get a letter or something. Hello? Hello, Susan. Merry Christmas. Well, uh, it wasn't really a promise. I said I'd do my best. You couldn't get it because you're not Santa Claus, that's why. Just a nice man with white whiskers like Mother said. I shouldn't have believed you. Susan. Oh, Merry Christmas, Chris. I'm sorry Susan is disappointed in me. Oh, she'll be all right. I've got to look in on her. Here's Fred. Merry Christmas. Where are you? Out at the home. Uh, Fred, uh, we're giving a little party this afternoon. Would you bring Mrs. Walker and Susan out to help us celebrate? Of course I will. Well, you turn off the parkway at Seymour. Drive three blocks, then turn on to Ashley Drive. You'll see it on the right. Got it. Bye. Susan, I was wrong when I told you not to believe in Mr. Kringle. But he didn't give me the... It doesn't make sense, Mother. <laughs> Faith is believing in things even when common sense tells you not to. I mean, even though things don't work out the way you want the first time, you still got to believe in people. I'll try. There it is, Ashley Drive. I do believe, I do believe, I do believe, I do. Stop, Uncle Fred, stop! Susan! Susan! Susan, you shouldn't be running around in other people's houses. But this is my house, Mommy. The one I asked Mr. Crinkle for. Now, Susan, darling. It is. It is. I know it is. Oh, you're right, Mommy. Things don't turn out right the first time. You still gotta believe. Mr. Crinkle is Santa Claus. He is. I'm going to see my swing. You told her that? Mm-hmm. The house seems to be for sale. We can't let her down. Oh, Fred. Oh, darling, I always believed in you. It was just my ridiculous common sense. Well, maybe it makes sense to believe in me now. I take a little old man and legally prove he is Santa Claus. Would you look at that? It's just a cane, Fred. Perhaps from a previous tenant. Maybe. But maybe I didn't do such a remarkable thing after all. Thanks, Chris. 
You've been listening to the Misfits audio presentation of Miracle on 34th Street, based on the public domain teleplay by John Marks Jr., derived from a screenplay by George Seaton. The original story was written by Valentine Davies. This story was transcribed and adapted for audio drama by Glenn Haskell. The original teleplay was part of the 20th Century Fox Hour from December 14, 1955. This audio drama was lovingly recreated for a new generation under public domain laws. And now, introducing our cast. Natalie Stanfield Thomas as Mrs. Walker. Peter Gatt as Mr. Gailey. Joe Stofko as Chris Kringle. Chloe Daynard as Susan Walker. Captain John Tatterzak as Judge Harper. Katie Daynard as woman shopper, mother. Russell Gold as Thomas Mara. Glenn Haskell as Mr. Shellhammer. Bob Arnold as Mr. Sawyer. Glenn Higby as Mr. Macy. Billy Flynn as Dr. Pierce. Colm Ward as Young Thomas. Carl Tomasello as store owner. Rory Ward as Peter. Tricia Groves as Miss Adams. Tony Collins as teacher. Blake Carter as bailiff. Delvin Kinzer as Charlie. Buzz Collins as postal employee. And I'm Dave Chrisman, your narrator. This story was adapted, produced, and mixed by Glenn Haskell. Executive producer and webmaster, Captain John Tatterzak. Art direction, Andrea Kuntz. This production is for enjoyment purposes only and is an original production by Misfits Audio, copyright 2013. Inspired by the original work of Valentine Davies. For more Christmas audio drama, visit us online at MisfitsAudio.com. And from all of us at Misfits Audio, Merry Christmas! <laughs>